Hi, and welcome to The Common Rounds. My name is Hamid, and today we'll be discussing transient ischemic attack. What is transient ischemic attack? It's considered to be a brief episode of neurological dysfunction brought about by momentary focal cerebral ischemia without the infarction component. Neurological deficits really depend upon the area of the brain experiencing that transient ischemia. But TIAs could potentially warn about an onset of stroke. How do these ischemic events come about? Well, as you can imagine, it's a short-term reduction in cerebral blood flow due to a number of factors, one of them being a microemboli, which travels down the, um, the affected artery or capillary, causing downward blockage. Stenosis is another potential factor due to atherosclerosis, where the narrow, a narrowing of the lumen eventually leads to um, reduced blood flow or complete blockage. Infarction is averted, so stroke is averted, because the blood uh, of the area is restored through autoregulatory mechanisms. But having said that, these patients are at an increased risk of developing strokes. In fact, 11% over the subsequent seven days, or a total five-year risk of 24 to 29%. It's also important to be familiar with somewhat the blood flow of, of the, uh, the regions of the brain. Um, I'll focus on the three key ones that I think are really important. Um, these include the anterior cerebellar artery, the middle cerebellar artery, and the posterior cerebellar artery. And as you can imagine, the different arteries and branches of these arteries supply various regions of the brain. So the anterior cerebellar artery, for example, supplies the middle interior part of the brain and somewhat the middle slightly outer portions of the brain. And as you can imagine, if you have a blockage of that, if, and you consider the motor, um, uh, the, the motor homunculus, the region of the brain, frontal cortex associated with the brain, the motor cortex, then you can expect a decrease in the capacity to move your foot, your leg, and perhaps the, um, the trunk as well. On the other hand, if you consider the posterior um, cerebellar artery, which is really important for the supply of the occipital lobe and its uh, visions, then it's important to consider that if you have a blockage in this region, you can have transient changes to vision and vision perception. But it's very important to be familiar with the various blood supply uh, of the brain and also what region they uh, these arteries and arterioles supply. So as you can imagine, because of the complex nature of the blood supplies of the brain, the clinical manifestations can vary significantly. And often these symptoms can last for less than an hour before the body's autoregulatory mechanisms restore blood supply. And as a consequence, patients may present um, soon after the um, symptoms have resolved, which makes diagnosis quite challenging. If the symptoms are still persisting after 24 hours, it may be in fact a patient experiencing a minor stroke. Other sort of signs and symptoms that patients can present with include aphasia, so difficulty swallowing, hemiparesis, or weakness on one side of the body, paresthesis, numbness or tingling on one side of the body. Other features could include poor balance, dizziness, behavioral changes. And an interesting presentation worth knowing is referred to as amorous fugax, and that's a sudden transient loss of vision in one eye, and it significantly increases the risk of stroke up to 13-fold. Now, in terms of diagnosis, uh, transient ischemic attack is predominantly a clinical diagnosis, but it's worthwhile knowing some differential diagnoses. So syncope, seizures, stroke, ischemic or hemorrhagic, especially if it's been a prolonged presentation, subarachnoid hemorrhage, migraine, CNF infections such as meningitis, and hypoglycemia can be potentially differential diagnosis that you need to consider. In terms of investigations, um, some of the blood work analysis that you um, can consider in pre performing would include blood glucose, coagulation studies, and lipid profile. All the lipid profile would not be considered an urgent blood work in that immediate presentation. Imaging modalities worth considering include CT imaging, which can be essential for observing hemorrhage or a mass lesion. MRI, which provides greater sensitivity than CT for ischemic and function of the brain. And other considerations include ECG. And that's predominantly to rule out cardiac causes such as arrhythmias, in particular atrial fibrillation, which is associated with a greater risk of developing thrombosis and a thrombosis that can then travel the internal carotid and get dislodged in one of the fine capillaries and arteries within the brain. From a treatment point of view, you can consider hospitalization or in fact close monitoring in the community. And it's very important to ensure um, access to early treatment in case the patient is having stroke. And this is why patients can be admitted to hospital for close monitoring. Pharmacological treatment is a very important component of the treatment modality. Antiplatelet agents such as aspirin, aspirin diprimidol or clopidogrel are very important considerations. 
Although the combination of aspirin and clopidogrel long-term has been shown to increase the risk of hemorrhagic stroke. Anticoagulation may be worth considering as well, particularly in patients with a history of atrial fibrillation. Warfarin can be started, INR range of 2 to 3, and aspirin for patients who are not good candidates for anticoagulation. Management of hypertension with pharmacological agents, obviously dietary um, monitoring, reducing salt intake is vital. Aiming for a systolic blood pressure of 120 to 130 millimeters of mercury. Management of lipids with statins, for example, is an e- another key consideration. Be mindful that, again, an- um, antilipids may slightly increase the risk of hemorrhagic stroke. It's important to really control the lipid profiles. One of the underlying causes of um, transient ischemic attack is atherosclerosis-induced ischemia. So it's very important to keep that uh, in mind when um, uh, recommending treatments to patients. This brings our presentation to an end. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, As always, if you have any comments, questions, or would like to participate in discussions or give us feedback, please visit our website, comment on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter.